Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Car. So we are carving an Easter Island here today. We're carving it out of a cedar, a great wood for beginners. And I'm keeping it quite small so it doesn't take too long to carve. Okay, so here we have the dimensions of the wood. We have sort of like 2.5 inches across, uh, 2 inches there. That will be the front of the carving. And... 5.5 uh, inches long. Now you might be asking why this is longer this way. Well there is a reason for that. Now when people carve Easter Island heads I see them and they carve them on quite a flat profile whereas if you look at them in um, reality they have quite, quite a kind of like curved, well not curved but angled profile like this. Okay, so what you could do to get a good kind of reference is sort of just print something off the internet and try and find something that's sort of really side on and just cut it out and sort of put it on your block of wood. You can sort of see here the nose is really, really long and the forehead is really, really short. It's not even the forehead, that's sort of like the top of the head there. So that's one of the defining features of this is the forehead is and the top of the head is really, really small and the nose is really really long and it's really angled out like that and um look we look at the distance there it's probably about the same as that okay so i'm going to carve the profile of this so we're going to carve all of this stuff away and when you're a beginner you want to choose really soft woods because this is really going to be quite hard to carve away if it was a harder wood and if you have got a saw or something you could just sort of like get a saw and go right down there and maybe down there and that would help you out a lot so you don't have to carve all of that stuff away just that kind of profile and try and get it to go straight down as well and if you have a bandsaw you can go follow the outline uh, very accurately but today I will do a little bit of both so using the bandsaw and I will also carve away a little bit as well. I've um, taken that part off there, I've just sorted it with um, the bandsaw, you could do it with a handsaw but you want to kind of like what you want to do next is just put on some reference points so there is sort of like that ridge that goes down and there is the tip of the nose kind of there kind of goes there for a little bit further and then you can sort of just put maybe a set square on and sort of take that line across so you know where you're carving. Just gives you kind of a little bit of an idea. And so we will take uh, that bit out there first. So now we are going to carve that profile and we want it that all the way through to the other side. So we sort of got to really sort of concentrate on just keeping to that line of the profile which might take a little bit um, you just got to sort of like play around with it uh, and we will also use the bandsaw on the bottom of the face it's much easier to use the bandsaw because it's sort of like keeping that straight line now the profile of the carving is not going to change throughout the carving it might change a little bit depending on how you kind of want it to look at towards the end but it sort of gives us a great reference point all the way through so really after we've carved the profile then what we do is then we look at the front and how we're going to carve that Now at this point when you're a beginner what you really want to do is you want to put a center line in. Actually any carver really should put a center line in so you kind of don't lose the center of the carving. And this is really important because that's where the nose is going to go and you're sort of like making references off that center line to keep things looking symmetrical on both sides. And I'm going to go all the way around the carving, even the back, because on the back it's good to have that center line because you're kind of probably going to round the back off and it's good to have that as a reference point when you're rounding to a line. 
And we're going to start working on the nose first so you can sort of like see on this one it is really big and it is quite wide as well you can sort of see it's almost like half of the nose width is actually equal to the width between the outer nostril and the cheek so I'm going to draw my nose in here and you kind of want the top of the nose well when you're drawing in noses it's always good to go a little bit wider just so you can sort of like adjust it because when you're carving it you cannot add back wood you can only take it away so it sort of like goes straight down and then you kind of think uh, where that kind of nostril is going to be don't add too much for the nostril just a little bit so that looks pretty good like that and then we can sort of go in a little bit there and there on the same side and then go up from there and that sort of gives us our nostril well it's just sort of like references to go by when we start carving away the material okay so you can sort of see i've taken the top of the head a little bit rounder as well i did that just before but now we're working on that part of the nose sort of just taking the material away at this stage i'm not trying to shape anything at the moment i'm trying to keep it quite square and then i will round it off a little bit later on Now I'm going to start rounding the nose off. Now when you start rounding the nose off, don't sort of think you're going to do it all at once. You could sort of like round it off till it sort of like looks semi-okay and then start working on the other stuff and then go back to the nose. It's sort of, <coughs> excuse me, it's sort of like this kind of like dance between sort of like giving something a general shape and then going back and giving it a little bit more of a shaping then referencing it to something else I'm sort of like I'm putting in a little bit of a nostril there and rounding that off but I might sort of go back to it a little bit later and work on the cheeks maybe now you can see there I've given the nose a general shape and I'm going to start working on the mouth below it and with mouths it's sort of more putting in what's underneath the mouth and all of that but you can sort of see what with the mouth what you want to do is you kind of want to round the whole mouth so it falls back from the middle because it's not flat it's um, going around the head and what we're using there is the Katzel Sphere Burr. It is a fine burr. It's really good for sort of like general shaping and all of that kind of stuff. You could use the Katzel uh, Extreme Burr if you want, if that's all you've got as well. But I just find this one, it's just really, really nice for sort of like skimming little bits off. And I, I'll tend to sort of like sort of like play around with the mouth and maybe then the nose and all of that like I said before and like I said before that uh, mouth it kind of falls back onto the face so the highest point is in the middle um, where that center line was and then the lips fall back so now I'm just putting in the line where the two lips kind of meet and then I go in with that T-shaped burr. It's really, really good for that. Don't go too deep here. I'm just sort of like putting in a line. And then what we're going to do is kind of, kind of like round the lips down into that line. And then you want to use that T-shaped burr to round the lips off. I'll do that bottom lip first. And you can sort of see I'm going to go in and sort of like use the top of the burr just to sort of like flatten that lip out a little bit so it's sort of a little bit rounder all the way across so that's looking a little bit better kind of looks a little bit grumpy at the moment and i'm just putting in the top part now so you can sort of see i'm just sort of like slightly putting a little bit of an angle going into that crease
Now I've got one of my other favorite burrs on, the Katsul Taper Burr. This is a fine as well. When you're sort of like carving these really soft woods and uh, putting in details, the fine is all you kind of need. And it sort of gives you a little bit more control because you're not taking so much away. So I'm sort of like working on the lips there still. I'm sort of like taking a little bit further back. Just working on those cheeks as well, so you can sort of see it rounds off away from the nose and it, that makes the nose stick out a little bit. And I have actually worked on a little bit on the top of the nose, you can sort of see it's more of a bit of a ski jump there. Now here's a Dremel accessory that I hardly ever use, this is the drum sander. But I actually found it quite good for this because it had quite big kind of like a uh, sort of... Um, planes to it and it worked out quite well I think there was like a 60 grit on this one so you can actually shape quite a bit with it as well and I just I didn't go out and buy these they a lot of the time these ones just come with the kit now I said before he looked quite grumpy so what you can do is you can take that crease and you can sort of like just angle it up a little bit at the end and this will take away that kind of look and give him maybe a more of a contemplative look maybe or just a sort of like that neutral kind of look so it's looking quite good now I've sort of like smoothed everything out and really it's just sort of like finishing touches here And it was quite a fun project. I kind of think it's pretty good for a beginner. You probably don't need to go into this much detail when you're doing it. But um, I think the angle on the head really works out and that super long nose. I reckon this would look awesome in a bigger um, kind of like a chainsaw carving or something like that. That you could put in the garden. Have your own little Easter Island head kind of like statues in the garden. That would look pretty cool. So I'm using those t burrs just to like flatten out that face there. And cedar is very good for sort of like um, giving carvings texture and you can do this by burning the wood. I haven't got a video on that maybe in the future. And you can also sort of like a, use an abrasive kind of aspect to it. What it actually does is it takes the softer material away from the harder material and the harder material that is left are sort of like the grain going through the wood there and the soft sort of like a really whitish kind of material is getting taken out and that's a wire brush now I'm going to say right now that uh, this is quite wasteful because the wire brush actually disintegrates uh, in this small carving so I wouldn't recommend this but it's kind of a fun thing to do and I would also say if you ever use one of those wire brushes, you must wear goggles where there is no way where any of those wires can flick up and get you in the eye. You need a sealed goggle right to your face and um, even then uh, they fly around everywhere, get you in the arm and all of that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't recommend doing this at all. <laughs> But I have actually seen another method which I would love to try sometime but I don't have one and that is that you can actually sandblast carvings and this will take away the soft parts of the wood and leave the harder parts and it gives it a real kind of aged look and so maybe maybe in the future I will do that.